I'm Bruce Naylor, your frugal tech, and I came across some very good tips on how to solve some of the more common problems you may experience with a wireless router. Um, I found, came across this article in Information Week. It was written by Bill O'Brien, and I thought these were pretty good, and I wanted to share some of these with you. Um, you know, it, it basically boils down to when a good wireless router seems to go bad. Well, what can be the problem? what could be some of the possible fixes. So the first problem I think a, a lot of people do run into is that your router seems to be you know, really, really slow. I mean, we're talking slow as molasses in February. What could be the problem with it? Well, a lot of routers um, basically use the 2.5 gigahertz band to broadcast on. Well, so do a lot of other devices, um, garage door openers, cordless phones, microwave ovens, all this sort of thing. And when that happens, you can get a lot of, a lot of traffic on those frequencies. And Bill uses the analogy, it's a lot like getting in a, in a crowded bus in a, in a busy city and, and fighting for that space. So that could be part of the problem. Now, there are uh, basically three major channels that you can use uh, 1, 6, and 11. Now there are up to 11 channels on there but according to Bill uh, he says that uh, that despite pretending to have 11 channels the others tend to overlap each other. So your neighbors may have Wi-Fi enabled also and so you could be getting some problems there. A potential solution to this might be uh, to, uh, to uh, change the channel, try a different channel on your wireless router, uh, and then uh, you could alternatively add a 5 gigahertz band component such as the Netgear WNH uh, DEB111 networking kit or the Linksys WGA600N to your present router. And that's a 5 gigahertz band uh, adapter. That's going to give you up to 23 different channels to try. But you also need a pair of adapters as well. So one's attached to the, the network switch and then uh, another to your, uh, your, uh, your, your network card on your, uh, uh, your, or rather to the adapters on your network devices. So that is a possibility to solve that problem. Uh, you may also try upgrading your firmware. That may sound scary to some folks, but it's really not that tough. Uh, a lot of times you go to the manufacturer's website, you download a patch, open up your browser to, and go into your administrative tools of your router, upload the uh, patch to it and it'll uh, update the firmware. So it, it's not really that scary of a, of a procedure to do that. Um, it also says uh, uh, you know, it's really just fairly easy to do it, and I, I've done it many times, so it's no big deal. Another problem that you may encounter with a wireless router is that you're trying to play, let's say, a game uh, with your kids. They're upstairs, and uh, things are really getting slow. Well, it could be a, there could be a quite a few reasons for that. Among them, uh, too many game players on the network is on a 2.5 gigahertz uh, Connection may uh, may uh, cause some problems. There are uh, there are as we've mentioned before the ability to add the uh, the, the Linksys or the um, uh, the Netgear adapters as well. There are um, media ready and game uh, optimized routers out there for sale on the market as well. You know since they've come out with the 802.11n routers. Uh, that may be something worth looking at as well. Now problem number three, you're locked out. Now this has happened to uh, some friends of mine, and some uh, customers of mine, you know they've, they've somehow lost the username and password for the router. They can't get logged back in. What do you do? Well basically it's, it's, there is a, normally a reset button on a router and that will reset it back to factory defaults. Now the downside to this is, is that any settings, custom settings you have in that router is going to get lost. 
Uh, that's why it's important when you do set up your router and get everything going well, a lot of the times you can make a backup of your configuration and save it to disk. But the good news is uh, you don't need to buy another router or anything like that. You can reset the factory defaults, reconfigure the router, and uh, you're up and going. Another common problem, uh, I guess, Bill says that you know it, your router is acting like a vampire, a vampire, and he's talking about that it sucks wattage continuously. Well, the solution is that you know every electronic device uh, sucks wattage. Some things that uh, some, and some things should. When you purchase a more in, uh, energy efficient router, consider the possibilities. Have you set up Windows to check for updates when you're not using your computer? Do you have other software? that scans for updates. Um, do you have other, uh, how about like Windows Media Center, for example, will continue to go online and, and get updates. Um, so we, we, we really live online 24-7 anymore, so 24-7 power usage is one of those consequences. So not really said. That being said, um, there are some uh, Energy Star compliant uh, routers out there if you want to go to that, that trouble. Another problem is uh, you reach a, a dead spot in your home, your office, with an 802.11G router and you can't seem or can't seem to reliably connect to it. Well, this is where you want to consider the new 802.11N routers that use a technology called MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. This is more frequencies, um, more signals going to that router. Uh, they're being marketed as having a greater speed, greater bandwidth, and a, a, and a longer range than the 802.11N routers, uh, what we call 54 megabit routers. So that is certainly something worth bearing in mind when you're having some reliability issues uh, connecting to your wireless router in your home or in your shop. The next issue is no Wi-Fi signal. Your, you know, your office or your home is so far away to your router uh, that no Wi-Fi signal can connect. Well, the obvious step is to connect a, a Cat5 cable, say Cat5e, Cat6, uh, you know, to your device, but that's not always practical. So an alternative is there's, uh, there's always what's called power line networking. And really what that is is a device that plugs into your wall socket and uh, on both ends, one near the router, one uh, near your, your wireless device, and you connect that way. Now, their build is being able to get you a speed of upwards of 300 megabits, but in the real world, it's closer to about 54 megabits, sometimes slower than that, and sometimes just don't flat work at all. So if you want to go that route, and maybe you have to because, you know, you're uh, maybe your building won't, you know, your landlord won't permit you doing things like that, or for whatever reason it might be. Make sure to uh, check the uh, return policy if you go down that avenue. Um, and finally, the last problem, no internet connection. Now, uh, typically, you'll, you'll kind of get these kind of uh, things happen when you rearrange your network, you move your modem, you, your cable modem, you move your router, get everything set back up and you can't connect. Windows is saying I can't connect to the internet. Well this is typically caused by a something not being set back up correctly. Uh, you, you know not all the cables were correctly uh, 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 installed or I know this is crazy but I've seen a lot of cable modems and DSL modems as well have an on and off button for the internet where you can just tap a button it kills your internet connection and people will accidentally tap that button and they think it's something else that they have done. It's, no, it's just as simple as hitting a little button and turns your internet connection back on. That's just one of the reasons, but typically it's because it didn't get reinstalled correctly. You didn't put the right cable, right connection in or something like that.